from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, people out there, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast, the podcast for learners of English. I'm Peter Tischer, and I am not with Roger Charlton today, but I have a studio guest, David Erent. David is not an Englishman, not an American, born and raised in France in a small town about 40 miles off of Bordeaux, but he works in Finland now. Uh, David, you moved to Finland because you got a job with the University of Turku. Indeed, yes. Yes. And what I would like to talk to you about, because our listeners may be surprised that I'm inviting a Frenchman who lives in uh, Finland for an English podcast, is about English as a lingua franca, so as a means of communication for people with different backgrounds. Uh, let me start off by asking you, how much Finnish did you speak when you first came to Finland? To Finland? Absolutely none. I had no idea. Maybe I knew kitos, so thank you. Uh huh. And that must, have, yeah. I think that so. Was it. English was your language of survival. <laughs> yes, okay. um, it was the the only language I could use to communicate there. So that is kind of a strange situation, isn't it? Um, you are a Frenchman who even has again a different background with a dad from Croatia. Your educational language is French. You live in Finland, in the Swedish-speaking region of that country, and suddenly your main language is English. Isn't that strange? Well, I must say that it wasn't the first time it happened to me. Uh, before that, I was living in Jordan, and uh, even before that in uh, Hungary. So uh, I had to deal with the exact same situation before. The difference was that the language... Uh, that I needed to learn in order to change that situation it wasn't so easy to learn. Uh, and uh, so I was presented with a choice, uh, keep using English, which was definitely a possibility, um, mm -hmm. learn Swedish, but it meant that I had to stay in that very small area and learn Finnish. Mm -hmm. Of course, you finally decided to learn Finnish. Eventually, uh, yes. But you are saying sticking to English would have been an option. Really? Is yes. it that widespread in Finland, you, in you the universities? You can live in Finland, yeah. You can live in Finland and never use Finnish. Mm -hmm. Or only the basic words. Because everybody speaks English, almost everybody. And when they don't, they will find someone who does uh, to help you. So, uh, So you can very well live in uh, in this country without speaking the language. Are there people who do that? Yes, many, I would say, yes. So a lot of your colleagues do that? Well, I did that for a while myself, mm -hmm. uh, the, the first years. Uh, and uh, at work, even, um, I, I kept using English mostly, for instance, in meetings. I express myself in English because... I, I, that way I was entering, that I was saying exactly what I wanted to say. Um, and also there is always the issue of sounding a little childish or uneducated <laughs> in, a, in a foreign language that you don't really speak fluently. So using English is a matter of keeping the uh, upper hand in a conversation. Mm -hmm. What about the students? I mean, in a German university, you would... Students would consider it strange to be addressed in anything else than German, at least regularly. In France, specifically, yeah. <laughs> uh, that would feel very, very strange. What about the students in Finland? Are they used to that? Or do uh, they, they are, feel they want to be addressed in their mother tongue? They are used to it. No one assumes that a foreigner speaks Finnish. No one. And... Um, And one of the, the biggest challenges uh, when you try to learn the language is that people will answer in English anyway. Uh -huh. So I know uh, that from Denmark. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you try your first words yeah, in Danish exactly. and they won't and let they, you. And they, they just 
reply in English. And with the students, it's the same. Uh, they they will systematically systematically address you in um, in English until you show them that you can communicate in Finnish. Okay, okay, and then they will practice with you a little bit. Yes, yes. Uh, then then they get really. Uh, enthusiastic about it and they forget that you don't know the slang and that you don't necessarily speak like a 20 year old uh, <laughs> but... I uh, would like to ask you one other thing is this a specific kind of English which you say if it's spoken at a as a lingua franca so you speak English very well I think our listeners can Thank notice you. that uh, but would you say this is still different from communicating with a native speaker. It is, definitely. And I would say that there is even a Finnish English. Is there? Because there, there's there's a way, yeah, there's a way to communicate in in, uh, in Finnish and you you just use some of the, the rules and you apply them to English. Mm -hmm. Or there are expressions that people just copy directly from Finnish and use in English. Uh -huh. And I ended up doing that myself because after a while you just don't notice it anymore and you, you use the same expressions. You told me when we prepared that the Finnish people don't speak very much anyway. <laughs> yes, that is, which is, that is different, true. Um, which is different, of course, also from Americans at least. Would you say they also copy that attitude into they're speaking of English, so yes. not saying a heck of a lot, and like, yeah. pleased to meet you, have a nice day, great, you must come and see me sometime, you know, all these. Yeah, the the, the small talk and uh, all the um, nice little things you use to to make the person talking to more comfortable or the, the, all these social interactions that don't really have anything to do with the message you're trying to convey. You don't do that in Finland, mm -hmm. or not much. Uh, so it's more a straight to the point approach. There, there's not not much of a um, thank you, how are you? Yeah, exactly. So what everything you described. Which we yeah. as English teachers try to teach them. Yeah, they can forget about that. In, well, in, the, in Finland, the, the uh, English teachers in Finland try to teach that as well, of course, and they insist on it quite a lot. There are courses dedicated to small talk and social interaction. But you, you well, the, the basics of asking very politely for something and saying please, which, by the way, is a word that doesn't exist in Finnish, uh, and, uh, and thanking people in a, in a very emphatic way. It's not something that Finns do. That's fascinating. I think uh, I would like to ask you a few more questions, but we've run out of time. So you want to do another podcast with me? Of course, I would love to. Okay, so we'll be back with some of the political maybe implications of this widespread use of English as a foreign language. So bye for now. We'll see you soon. <laughs> bye bye. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.